Attention XRP holders, today is your lucky day because not only are we diving into the recent hiccup with the XRP ledger, but we're also talking about a game-changing partnership that could redefine XRP's role in the financial sector. Stick around and find out how XRP could soon become the backbone of a massive financial shift. First up, let's address the elephant in the room. The XRP ledger experienced downtime today, and this isn't just a small glitch. It's a moment that has caught the attention of the entire XRP community. The ledger, known for its reliability and efficiency, suddenly hit a snag, halting transactions, causing a stir among users and investors alike. Now you might wonder, what does this mean for XRP's future? Or more critically, is the trust in XRP's infrastructure shaken? But here's the kicker. Amidst the downtime, there's a silver lining, and it comes from RCAX. RCAX is not just another name in the financial space. They're stepping up as an XRP money market partner. They've just facilitated the tokenization of Airbnb's $3.8 billion US liquidity fund on the XRP ledger. And this partnership signifies a major step towards real world asset tokenization, providing a solution to the liquidity and efficiency problems often faced in traditional finance. And here's how it works. By tokenizing money market funds on the XRP ledger, RCAX is essentially making these funds more accessible, transparent, and easier to trade, all while leveraging XRP's fast transaction capabilities. This move not only helps in times like today when the ledger faces issues, but by providing alternative liquidity routes, but also positions XRP as a key player in the institutional finance. Ripple and the XRP Ledger community are no doubt working on solutions to prevent future downtimes. With partners like RCAX, XRP is not just surviving, it's thriving by integrating into real-world financial applications. So while today's hiccup obviously caused a ton of concern, the strategic moves like partnering with RCAX is setting up XRP for a robust future, making it not just a cryptocurrency, but a cornerstone in the new age of digital asset management. Stay tuned as we keep tracking these developments because XRP's journey from just another crypto to a financial powerhouse is just beginning. We have some great information that we're going to be covering. We do have some breaking news that we'll be taking a look at over here on X.com as well today. Before we jump into any of that, let's take a look at the overall market update for all of cryptocurrency. Right now, the market cap has dropped 3.94% today. We are at $3.2 trillion in the market cap. Volume, however, is up. So up 20% today, $239 billion worth of volume. We have our fear and greed index sitting at 84 and our Bitcoin dominance right now is at 57.29. Quick update for XRP, currently sitting at number six in the market cap charts. It is up 26% in the last seven days, but over the last 24 hours down 1.35%, sitting at $1.41. Currently at $80 billion as far as their market cap goes. Volume in the last 24 hours, though, $11 billion in volume, which is absolutely crazy. Very positive news. Obviously, we're having a little hiccup as far as the price goes, a little trading sideways accumulation going on before the next leg to the upside. Taking a quick look, where is all of this volume coming from? Well, right now we've got 1.3 billion coming in from Upbit, 1.3 from Binance, 1.26 from SuperX, and then BTCC at $1.1 billion. Current community sentiment for XRP is 88% bullish, and that comes behind a 171,000 votes. Taking a look here at Fiat Leak, as we can see, tons and tons of transactions continue to flow through the XRP ledger. On the XRP charts right now, we can see a third consecutive day to the downside. Not much movement down. We do have a little support right here coming in at $1.38. We definitely do not want to lose that section there. We have one minute left in this daily candle. We're about to close it right here in 50 seconds. All right, so the new daily candle has now officially kicked off. The good news is we are still very bullish to the upside, sitting above that 10 exponential moving average on the daily charts. And if we take a look back to last week when price was consolidating sideways, it did just hold its pace for several days before bouncing off the 10 exponential moving average on the 12 hour time frame. We're looking at something very similar here. So we want to stay, obviously, keep our support above this 10 exponential moving average. If we lose this on the 12 hour, we could see a pullback into this level down here with this fair value gap of the 12 hours retesting this previous consolidation level. 
And taking a look here at our momentum indicator, we are still very green. So extremely positive as far as that goes to the upside on the daily charts. Let's look at the weekly. On our weekly money flow, it had been red for quite some time. We finally busted up to the upside into the green, which is really nice here on the weekly charts. The white indicator here is actually the volume weighted average price. You can see we were shooting through to the upside, came across for that second up candle week. Right now we are turning to the downside. Our daily VWAP is actually below the center line right now. We need to see this thing curve back to the upside so we can continue the momentum up. So a couple of days of consolidation, and of course we'll keep you updated every day. So make sure you subscribe and we'll keep track of what's going on in the charts for you. Checking out the breaking news over here on X now for the next couple of minutes before we get into those two headline news articles at the end. Last week, Brad Garlinghouse says, 60 Minutes interviewed me about crypto, the push for regulatory clarity and how the industry band together to advocate for pro-innovative candidates on both sides of the aisle through Fair Shake Pack. Full episode to be aired soon. Stay tuned for details. The original post that I had has been edited from this version here, which he stated that it was going to be Sunday, December 1st, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Obviously, they had some sort of miscommunication there. So no update if it officially when that article and that interview will be airing. So I'll keep you guys updated on that as well. And I'm sure if you're like me, you have noticed Brad Garlinghouse has been going on more and more financial news channels and talking about Ripple, the company, XRP, the fight with the SEC coming to an end and all of these really positive things, which is great, right? Because you always hear about that when it comes to a financial market Typically, the big banks, typically the big institutions, they'll do all of their accumulation and then they'll start a press tour afterwards to push that price up to get the actual retail side of things invested into these products. So this is really positive news to see Brad going on multiple news is now doing a major interview. So very positive and a lot of publicity going forward for Ripple. As you've seen in the news a lot lately is this new Michael Saylor strategy where he's borrowing money, buying Bitcoin, company goes up so he can borrow more money to buy more Bitcoin. It's an infinite money glitch, which is really interesting. But take a look at this. Saylor's convertible bond strategy explained to finance noobs in the simplest possible terms. So Saylor says, hey, lend me a hundred bucks. The lender says, okay, what's my interest rate? Taylor says, I won't be paying any interest. They ask, why should I lend you money then? Taylor goes on to say, because I'll pay you back even more than you earned with the market interest rates. I'll pay you back in micro strategy shares once they clear the strike price set in a convertible note. The shares are very likely to be worth much more than the $100 in a few years. There are no guarantees, but odds are you're going to make $200, $500, even $1,000 on that original $100 loan. Where else can you get those types of returns from bonds? And of course, the lender is going to say, nowhere. Have you done this before? Has it worked out? And Sailor's answer is yes. I have crushed all other bond stocks, Bitcoin itself, over the last four years. So it is pretty interesting with what he's doing when you think about the strategy of this, right? So his business's performance is based on the fact that Bitcoin continues to go up. Now, he does have an underlying software sales company, which is great as well. But the reality, all the returns basically are coming from Bitcoin. The company is doing so well that he's able to go to the banks and ask for money or go to people, venture capitalists, and ask for money at zero interest rate because they know if they lend that money and it's attached to that stock, the convertible bond, when they go to claim that bond in four years, it's going to be worth more than the $100 that he lent out. And in fact, Anthony Pompliano talks about this in this video here. So check this out. Well, there's a couple of things going on. First of all, when you talk about corporations, historically, they've had two levers to pull in terms of improving their business. They can drive more revenue or they can cut expenses. What Michael Saylor really introduced is this idea of taking your balance sheet and creating a third lever that you can pull. It's not really that new. Real estate has been doing this for a long time where they use that to secure loans and, and do other things. It's just that we haven't thought of software companies or others being able to do the same thing. And so now you have an asset that obviously is growing very quickly there's only 21 million of them and it seems to be working out now what i do think is interesting is because there's only 21 million of these uh anyone who buys it if there's increased demand the price goes up and so you know we had a fund that was anchored by two public pension funds that we raised in 2018 uh we bought bitcoin around 5500 uh for those public pension funds 
they're up really big on it. And so I do think that anytime you buy an asset, whether it's Bitcoin stocks, commodities, real estate, et cetera, and it goes up a lot, it will help close those funding gaps. Now, what I do think is really important though is Bitcoin in particular was a bottoms up adoption story. So historically technologies are top down, governments and militaries adopt it first, then corporations and eventually individuals. Here you actually had individuals first. The reason why that's important is Bitcoin is the only asset that I know of in financial markets. As the price goes up, it becomes less risky. And so now you have the biggest pools of capital showing up and saying it now is only big enough where I can start to buy it. And so you have central banks, you have public pension funds, et cetera, that are saying, okay, now we're getting close to $2 trillion. I can start allocating to this thing. And so individuals front ran it, but the largest pools of capital still are heavily under allocated to this asset. I think it's going to be very good for price. So to augment and you want to know something that's extra awesome and special and beautiful for XRP Army? Well, the fact is we're only at 80 billion. So we are not anywhere near the position where institutions have to start accumulating this. Now, institutions are accumulating, maybe banks, because they're going to be able to use it and so on. But the exciting thing is soon, instead of everyone talking about Bitcoin this and Bitcoin that, it's the way to be. XRP, because of its use case, remember BTC beta test coin, the initial developers of a lot, a lot of the developers on BTC left. In fact, one of the main developers helped create XRP. XRP is going to be the only coin in real life that has legal clarity. Every other thing they've gotten a pass, most of them, Bitcoin, Ethereum, they've gotten a pass. Will the pass for Ethereum last? Who knows? But XRP has legitimate use case. So this is also going to catch on. And we are front running XRP right now. The fact that it's only a dollar forty-three. I know a lot of you guys were getting in at thirty-three cents, fifty-five cents. This is still super early. Just think about this: a ten x in market cap from here goes to eight hundred billion dollars. That's ten dollars and forty-three cents. We're still not even getting into the trillion dollar mark. So there's so much upside and potential for XRP. Now I see a lot of people in this market right now freaking out because we had this massive pump and they're like, oh no, it, it, they have PTSD because of the fact that we've suffered for so long. Oh my gosh, I'm finally in profits. I should exit. And hey, if that's what you want to do, by the way, none of this is financial advice. This is just financial entertainment, education only. But in, the fact that some people have been holding XRP for three and a half, four years, and now they're trying to ditch it just because the first pump just blows my mind. And when we think about this, right, because we have partnerships with banks with Ripple. And I asked Grok to give me some information. I said, tell me about the banks that Ripple has partnered with, all of the banks. And this is really interesting what they said here, but Ripple has partnered with numerous banks and financial institutions globally to streamline their cross-border process throughout RippleNet and related technology. Here's a list of some of the key banks Ripple has collaborated with. And they went on to give me some banks here, Bank of America, Santander, PNC Bank, UBS, HSBC, so some major ones, right? American Express, but it was so big of a list. Take a look at this. The list is not extensive, the one that, or not exhaustive, the one they gave me here, as there are over 100 financial institutions involved with RippleNet. And partnerships can evolve. Banks like Bank of America, Santander, and others have been confirmed to be Ripple partners either directly using XRP for liquidity or integrating Ripple technology for operational benefits. So when you build a house, what do you want? You want a strong foundation. Well, XRP has one of the most robust foundations that I've ever seen in any crypto. And while doing research for this video today, look at this. Another partnership comes through or another huge announcement for XRP today. 112 billion AUM Wisdom Tree registers in Delaware for a spot XRP ETF. They continue to flow in. In fact, let's check on the ETFs. As we know, currently, they have not been approved yet. But take a look at this. In the United States, we have Bitwise has filed there for their ETF. Grayscale has filed for their XRP trust. In Europe, we have 21 shares. They've applied for theirs. ETC Group has applied. CoinShares has also applied for an ETP. Wisdom Tree just applied for an ETF. These products or filings demonstrate growing interest in providing regulated investment vehicles for XRP outside of traditional direct cryptocurrency trading. However, it is important to note that while ETPs in Europe provide similar investment opportunities, actual ETFs for XRP in the US are still pending SEC approval or regulatory changes. And what do we know that's coming? The new SEC is coming. The new Treasury is coming in the United States under Donald Trump's administration. Potentially a new IRS head of 
rules and regulations there. And remember, these are all very important for the normies out there, the people that are afraid to get fully involved into crypto, meaning they have their own wallet or they have a, a ledger where they keep it offline and store their own crypto. Because some people, that's very scary for them. Not your keys, not your crypto is the best way to do crypto. But for those people that are scared of that, which there's a very large portion of the old boomers who are the ones that have all of the money stored in their re retirement funds and so on, they can now get involved. And this will also help suck the liquidity out of the market into these because they are going to have to actually hold the underlying asset for these exchange traded funds. But interestingly enough, for those of you out there that are not scared to hold your own crypto, which is probably a smart thing, because when we take a look at the facts when it comes to banking, U.S. banks are now facing a $515 billion in unrealized losses. This is very scary for the market. So from 2022 through 2024, basically everything they were holding on to has becoming a loss for them. And this is why they want to get into crypto, because if they can start bringing in Bitcoin ETFs, they can start bringing in XRP ETFs and people start buying assets that do actually go up, it will help with the banking potential collapse as well. And the source of this is from the FDIC. And it says here, note, insured call reports filers only. Unreal losses on security solely reflect the difference between the market value and book value of non-equity securities as of quarter end. So in other words, everything they own, all of their assets are currently underwater. They're not worth as much as they paid for them. And as we start off the video, the elephant in the room, XRP Ledger did experience a brief halt this, this afternoon. XRP Ledger was launched in June of 2012. June 2nd of 2012 is now 12 years, five months, 23 days old as of November 25th, 2024. This marks only the second halt in over 12 years of operation during which no fully validated transactions were produced. The halted ledgers were 92346896 through dash 95. XRP has experienced two hours of halting out of 110,000. That is extremely efficient. For comparison, Bitcoin experiences a halt about once every 34 days, while Solana faces halts almost every week. Despite the brief interruption, XRP Ledger has operated flawlessly 99.9982% of the time. The optimal uptime consolidates the XRPL as the most reliable and robust blockchain in existence. And the great news is, even though this did fall and they were worried that potentially some of the blocks were lost, everything has actually come back on. Because as you can see right here, they were reporting that some of these blocks were lost. However, after everything has come back online, they have found that no blocks are missing, which is a very, very powerful, very positive outcome. And going back to the second headline that we covered this morning, ArcX launches Airbnb's 3.8 billion money market fund as the first tokenated fund on the XRP ledger in collaboration with Ripple. ARCX is the first regulated custodian under the FCA. They're forecasting $17 trillion to flow through that space. Across the traditional world and that of the, the digital world, providing access to an institutional client base. And this is really what the digital ecosystem looks like with ARCX playing a key role in each component. Our vision is really uh, this in terms of what the future of capital markets looks like. And this slide really shows where we are in our journey. Uh, the blue line showing where we are live and what we're actively doing in the market today. And the purple really is uh, those products and offerings which are very much on their way. So in addition to the primary and secondary and custody brokerage and our tokenization engine, you know, we're looking at and, and we're soon to be live on other parts of our offering, including our digital CSD via our Monta subsidiary, we're launching new products, staking, lending, e-money and fund management services also, um, providing really this true end-to-end -end institutional grade offering. Uh, th this chart uh, won't be a surprise to anyone on the call today. Um, it really tries to capture the mammoth size of the ma um, market opportunity, um, addressing more than 1,700 trillion uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in assets, which are likely to become digital. Um, digitization of all the world's assets, traditional markets, uh, adoption of crypto uh, currencies and the tokenization of real world assets. This is the size of the addressable market. And this is the market in which we see a huge opportunity to, to participate. So very exciting news with Archax 
and Ripple combining. This is only the beginning because this is the first step. I guess they're a little dipping of the toe in the water to see what's going to work out for this scenario, but it's very, very exciting. So let's do a quick run through of all the major cryptos right now. So as we can see, XRP trading at $1.42. It did run into this very key area of interest. It came to us all the way back from 2021 at $1.63 and rejected immediately off there. We will like to see a push through that and then breaking above that previous most recent high, not an all-time high, but the most recent high also coming from 2021, $1.96. Basically, we need to get to $2.00 claim that as a support so we can really make our way up to that $10 mark. Bitcoin having a significant pullback the last couple of days. As we saw the other day, the world famous Jim Cramer said, hey, Bitcoin is an awesome, uh, an awesome asset to hold literally on the 21st and the 22nd. And sure enough, price began to fall after that. So we are having to do a Cramer recover we have fallen on the daily below the 10 exponential moving average. Definitely need to recover that so we can push back up to that $100,000 mark. When we take a look at the Heiken Nashi candles, as far as support levels go, the daily support level is all the way back here at 69,000. So we, I don't see that happening. I mean, obviously that's a potential of happening, very scary scenario, but let's look at a smaller time frame so we can get more realistic. So you can see all these chops right in here. Maybe that's too much. Let's do a 12 hour. There we go. Okay, so now we got a 12 hour. If price comes down, there's a 12 hour support at this level here at 91,000 ish. But Bitcoin is still very bullish. So we'll continue to follow. I mean, if we start to lose these momentums, just the other day, Michael Saylor bought over 55,000 Bitcoin and unfortunately did not move the price to the upside. We're still continuing to sell. I'm not sure where these sellers are, but they're out there. Taking a look here at Ethereum, we've been tracking Ethereum for a very long time, and we do need to break this level right here. We're getting close. We had to push up through that level, 3,500. Once we break, I mean, look, at this is just tons and tons of interference on the way back up to this important key level up here at 3,932. And once we get there, we can finally push to that previous all-time high, 4,091, and really start to get some price discovery for Ethereum. As we take a look at Solana, breaking through a new all-time high, literally just barely tipped above that all-time high, but it did do it. So that's great news. What an absolute beast of a recovery, by the way. I mean, it was down here at $7, now all the way back to $259. What is really crazy here, if we wanted to take a look at this real quick, let's go with this high. If this was the cup and this was the handle, let's take a look. What would this breakout get us to? Do a trend line from here would be the neckline. All right, so from the low to the neckline here, that's a little too high. It's got to be this move here. Let's take a look at what that extension would be. So when we look at Solana with the cup and handle play out, and it has broken above the neckline, if this were to play all the way out to the tippity top of that level, we're looking at $412. And what's interesting, if we look at Sui, it just did a cup and handle breakout. So it went from the bottom and this was the extension and that's literally where it's at right now. It got from the bottom to the neckline. You take the extension and that's where Sui hit for its new all-time high and has rejected off of that level for now. Now it is creating a nice little bull flag here and that continuation pattern would get us up to $5.25. So let me know which coins are you most excited about making the move to the upside in this short period of time. Let me know down in the comment section. Do you have any favorite meme coins possibly? Any favorite altcoins? Let me know your favorite one down, down below. There is one I'm taking a very close look at and that is Floki. It is having a nice little pullback. But I see some great things coming from Floki here very, very soon. It could also be making a cup with the handle pattern here very shortly. And then off to the races for Floki. They have a new game coming out at the end of this month, which is also very, very exciting for them. But really, the momentum also flashing to the green side here, just getting started. We have some fair value gaps that are potentially be, be getting filled on this weekly chart. You can see it dipped into that fair value gap already. But if you want to find out how we analyze and find more altcoins, take a look at this. Hey, bull runners, check this out. If you want to learn how to find the next 10x, 50x, or even 100x 
altcoin in this video, listen to this. Our research team posted GOAT on the 13th of October of 2024 when it was right at a penny. And since then, it rallied to over $1 and it's currently still up over 5,000%. That's like turning $1,000 into over $50,000. Our team called Pendle at only a $16 million market cap or 16 cents back on February 18th of 2023. All the way back here and since then, it's rallied up over four thousand percent that's a 40x it's like turning a thousand dollars into over forty thousand dollars our team also called BitTensor tau september 15th 2022 before the token was ever even launched and since then tau has rallied over two thousand percent that's a 20x our team even said solana is most likely to be one of the easiest trades next year and this was posted december 29th 2022 on the day that solana bottomed out at around eight dollars and since then solana looks like it's up over 2500 percent that's a 25x it's like turning a thousand dollars into over twenty-five thousand dollars and the bull run is just getting started the list goes on and on and on our team called sui ondo and even some of the biggest cult based meme coins like mog back in july 20th of 2023 the day that mog launched so if you want to learn how our team is finding these altcoins before they explode we just launched altcoin pro university where our research team gives you real-time altcoin picks with explosive potential for this bull run along with a hundred plus expert curated classes crafted by industry experts to discover these gems yourself on top of our live weekly calls every single week for in-depth crypto market analysis and daily updates. And that's just a fraction of what we offer inside of Altcoin Pro University through the link below. And although we make no guarantees because crypto is definitely risky, guys, this is only $97 a month or $970 a year. If you want to save $194, getting two months for free and unlock some exclusive bonuses through the link below. But I'm not going to talk all about that in this video because we have a lot to cover. Just go through the link in the description below. Get in right now. Watch the 26 minute video covering everything that Altcoin Pro University offers because we have a lot to cover with you over the next few minutes in this video to help you become the first millionaire in your family tree. If that's a goal of yours, our goal is to help a thousand members set their portfolio up for life this month. And you can get started through the link in the description below right now, or you can go to bullrunners.com to take advantage of the bonuses we're giving you before they expire. We have about 200 members right now, and we literally just launched like less than five days ago at the time of making this video. Everyone is loving the community. They're loving the education. They're getting access to real-time altcoin picks first before we ever make videos about them. So click the link in the description below, watch the video, and I'll see you on the inside.